Okay, welcome back. So we are now at a spot where if you follow along the first two tutorials, we have brought in our animation and we have added all our materials and shaders to the point where the objects are looking pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna do is start working on the set dressing. And so we've got this tree here and a rock, but we don't really have anything else to sort of make it feel like a forest. And so what I did was I put a picture of a forest in my HDRI. So if you look at my dome light here, I've got a dome light with a forest picture in the actual uh, light down here. I've got this texture. But that really just sort of gives me a sort of foggy background with the depth of field, which is fine. But I'd like to put in a forest. And if you switch to your perspective view and look around a little bit, you can see why. It's pretty empty and pretty bare. Right? I've got a horse and a tree, and that's about it. Um, and so what I want to do is, and let's switch over to our real-time mode to get rid of the fog that I've got turned on. Um, so you can see I've got a picture of a forest, but it's really not going to work for uh, making this feel foresty. So what we're going to do is do what's called set dressing, and we're going to put in some trees in the background here, and then uh, we'll work on that. Now, if you haven't seen Paul's great tutorial video on the paint tool, it's definitely worth checking out, because there's quite a few little tips and tricks he's got in there, and we're going to be leveraging that to do this really quickly. So well, without further ado, let's jump in. So we are on our root layer, and what we want to do here is, the first thing I need to do is make this ground plane a bit bigger so I can use it as a base to paint on. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale this up. Now it just so happens it's a decent size, but if it's a bit bigger, like maybe that, and maybe what I'll do just so I don't have to have it huge off screen is I'll just move it this way a little bit. And that will allow me to paint sort of a forest around behind and through the rock area. So then the next thing I'm going to do is just quickly look in my camera to get a feel for where those rocks are. And you can see sort of we see part of the rock and then across to the other rock and away we go. And so what I'm going to do just so I get a feeling from where I want my my trees it feels like i want to put some in here and then some more back in this area okay so what i'm going to do now is going to create a new sub layer and i'm going to call this one forest set dressing shot one just to stay consistent and i've created that new layer and i'm going to right click and edit it, that one and hit save again just so that everything's saved and ready to go so i'm ready in this shot and in my stage here i'm going to paint in my trees so it's as simple as a couple things we're going to do here so first i'm going to grab the paint tool and in this area i'm going to grab a bunch of examples that we ship with so nvidia comes with a bunch of really great examples here so if we look under localhost nvidia assets and you can look in different things here for machinima, for rocks and stuff like that. One of the things I'm going to look in vegetation and under trees, I'm going to look to see what kind of fits with this forest. Uh, you can see we've got a lot of different ones to pick from. It feels kind of like a Douglas fir kind of scenario. Um, maybe you might want to mix and match with a few other trees. So let's first pick the Douglas fir. I'm going to open that one. And if you do want to mix and match with some other trees here, what you can do is move this down a little bit, add asset, and pick another one. So maybe not just Douglas fir, but you want to also put in, let's say, this yellow pine. And maybe we want to add in, uh, let's see what else we like, this white pine. So I've got sort of a evergreen kind of feel to the forest. Now maybe I want to have less of the white pine, so I'm going to put in like maybe only 26% of the time I'm going to get a white pine. I'm going to get a yellow pine maybe 50% of the time and a lot of Douglas fir, just so I can get different levels of them. And then the next thing you can do here is if I select, so I'm going to hit Q, select this geometry and then hit my paintbrush. 
Um, in my brush parameters, there's a bunch of things I can do here. So you can see how big my brush is. I can make that smaller. So if I want to take this radius to maybe uh, 30 as opposed to what it was, it's much smaller. And now we've got the brush size in a decent spot. And there's a bunch of other properties here you can play with. And the first thing I'm going to look here is the different sizes of the trees. So you can see this one's only two meters, basically six meters, and this one's a giant tree compared to the other two is 27 meters. So maybe we want to have less of the giant trees and maybe a bit more of that and mostly of these size trees. Okay, once we're happy with that sort of mix and ratio, we're just going to hit this close and look at some of these other properties. So we've changed this brush size. Um, density, uh, it's how much you're going to get, and you can do more or less. Let's try maybe a 15. Um, Stamp spacing, this is how far apart the trees are going to be, so you can play with this as well, but let's try just bumping that up slightly. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to play with is our scale. So maybe you want to have some of these trees a bit larger, so 0.7 and a bit smaller. And then you can mess with how much of a drop-off you have. So do you have the medium-sized trees, some of the big trees, some of the little trees, something like that. You can you can bias it one way or the other. And then basically you just want to go here and try painting. So I'm going to paint a bunch of forest and you can see right away um, that it paints a lot of trees really quickly, which is pretty cool. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is go to my depth of field camera that I've got and start seeing these cameras and if I switch the camera without the depth of field maybe we can see a bit better so you can already see these trees are feeling pretty good uh, with very little effort at all uh, which is nice uh, I'm going to just try looking at it from a different time and timeline and that feels about right already um, but it just feels like we need a few more so pretty straightforward I'm going to go back to my perspective view and it looks like we have some decent trees here, but we want to move some trees in this area. So again, I'm going to grab the paint tool. I'm going to first select this ground object so we know what we're painting on. Grab the paint tool. All these settings are here. And if you are happy with this, by the way, you can always hit save. So we can save this as a tree. I've just called it name this whatever. Or we can go new and say this is my forest shot 01 and name it that and save that so the next time we come in here we can find those uh, and load it or we can go in our paint library and pick different ones that we've got so we've got one for trees we've got one for whatever we wanted to do so this earlier one I called scatter and probably not the best to name but you can play around with the settings and quickly get a forest. So let's do that. I'm going to paint some trees in here. And you can see they feel like they're fairly spaced out quite a bit. So maybe the density needs to go up to 25. And what I'm going to do, if you're not, if you're not happy with your painting, let's say you do this and you sort of test it, that's starting to feel pretty good. It might be a little too dense, but somewhere in between, probably 22. Um, you can always come here to stage select your paint tool and just hit delete and that will clear out your spot for a fresh start and what I typically do is that as I mess around a little bit get the settings to a spot where I like it so in this case I'm feeling pretty good about where we are right now maybe a, a bias I'm a little bit bigger and then I'm just gonna paint so I'm gonna put some trees here by the rocks I'm gonna put some trees in the back here and I'm definitely going to put a bunch of trees in the back here and fill it in for where the camera hits. And then if you look around, we're suddenly getting a nice sort of feeling of a forest pretty quickly. And maybe too many rocks or maybe not enough, or sorry, too many trees or maybe not enough. But you have to sort of look, did I do a good job making it too dense or not enough? Um, it feels like these ones in the front here maybe a little bit too close to camera so what we can do is instead of having them all selected it's probably these trees that we felt were too close so if you go in your paint you can actually on the brush you can grab the erase brush and you can try erasing just these ones and looking in your camera to see if that's any better and suddenly that's feeling pretty good it's a lot better maybe this particular tree i want to erase 
um, you can just go back and forth. And so you can go, okay, this one tree here, let's get it rid of this guy and take a look again. And that's a really nice way to sort of control the density so it falls off and where you'd like to. So that's how you would use the paint tool, um, which is pretty cool. Pretty straightforward, really quick. And as I said, if you haven't seen Paul's tutorial on the paint tool itself, um, a bunch of really great stuff he shows with that. Definitely check it out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the second shot where the horse is a bit further back, and I'm going to show you a few more tricks while we're here. Okay, so in this second shot, uh, I wanted to show you a few more tricks. Now, obviously, we painted in the forest just like we talked about in the back before. In fact, I actually used the same forest, and then the only thing I started painting in was this grass. So in this case, I started using grass short A here. And the nice thing about that is you can actually go in and you can change the color. So if you wanted to be a bit more green or, or more yellow, you can do any sort of tuning of that grass to be whatever you, you like it to be. So I'm just going to drop that down to about that color. And where I found this stuff is, again, if you go under uh, your local host, NVIDIA, and then you go under Assets, we've given you quite a few really nice things. So as you saw before, we have the trees in there, but we put in the grass, the short A, we said bushes, a um, whole bunch of flowers and stuff like that. And then on top of that, we have a few other examples. So if you go in um, this asset directory in vegetation, we were in trees before. If you go in shrub, here's where all those grasses are and stuff. And so we use that grass short A, as I talked about, uh, to do that sort of thing. And let's actually take a look because the other thing I wanted to do is start hand placing some stuff. So I had like this tree that gets sort of a shallow depth of field to make you focus on the horse and then this sort of blurs out again um, or you can see at the top of a bush it's super fuzzy here so if I go near the end you can see these bushes are really depth of field out while you start really focusing on the horse and then again it drops depth of field um, but you'll notice I've got some sticks and some logs and some other stuff in here that's not necessarily these grasses so I'll show you both things here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my perspective camera and I'm going to switch to real time so we get rid of that fog effect that we have with our path tracing. I'm going to talk about a few different examples here. So this green bush actually is the forsythia that I brought in and you can see it's yellow and in this case I basically duplicated it, made it a color that I liked and then positioned it by hand. And so it's as simple as dragging it in and dropping it in and then if I look in here, my forsythia, I've got quite a few of them. And so what I did was I grabbed this one and I just duplicate it. So I could just control D for duplicate and move it to wherever I want. Now this is in a different layer, which is why I'm getting this error here. Because what I've done is I've made some of these, air, these um, set dressings locked. Right? So this is a way to protect your scene from uh, mistakes being hap happening. So if I make another sublayer here, and we'll just call this um, set dress example, and hit save. What we'll be able to do now is basically start putting stuff into that set dressing scene. So let me set that up for you, and then we'll start going. So we've got the set dress example, right click, set edit, and like I said, I can grab one that I've already gotten here and duplicate it, or I can pick something else. Like maybe we want to put in this acacia one. And so we can drag and drop the acacia in here. And my particular scene, the way I've set it up, is everything's quite large, or sort of my scene's quite small. So if I just do 0.1 and 0.1 and 0.1, and I'm just hitting control click to do that. Maybe I want to take this bush now and position it in the back here somewhere. Maybe I want to put it back here um, or over here or wherever. So it's as simple as that. Drag and drop, move stuff around. Um, the other thing that I did was, as I said, I positioned this tree, similar idea where you can just drag and drop a tree in, mess with the scale and, and rotate it however you like. Again, just by going into the instead of vegetation in trees and grabbing this tree and dropping it in. Now you'll find that um, that that's pretty cool and it gives you quite a bit of flexibility but as I mentioned I have some sticks and stuff here for instance that um, are just random sort of bush pile kind of stuff and in 
if you go up to the assets, you can see we've got different ones. So we've got characters, machinima, and machinima has got quite a few really great things in here. So if I go under assets, here's my vegetation and all the ones that I've been talking about. You can go into Banner Lord, for instance, and find a bunch more assets in here. So there's chests and rocks and all sorts of fun stuff that you might want to find. Like maybe we want to put a basket barrel or something. And in this is actually where I found the sticks. I found a bunch of interesting stuff like rocks and broken things. Maybe this pile of manure that you can turn into <laughs> a rock or something if you want to. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few really interesting things to play with. As you can see, I'm only on letter B and here's already a wood pile. And again, it's just as simple as drag and drop and position it where, you, where you'd want to. And again, my scene 78 is probably way too big. So if I do up a scale of one, let's say, and position it where you'd like to do. So that's kind of how I would put brush pile and different things down. And again, there's there's a bunch of assets if you want to mess with looking through here. You can just see there's tons of different rocks and cliffs and all sorts of really great stuff to play with. Um, and it's really fun to just sort of drag and drop. You can paint them in if you like to, as we talked about. Uh, and, or you can just sort of position them around. So if you want to play around, set dressing is actually a ton of fun. Um, and then the last thing, as I mentioned, was that depth of field. So if I go to my camera again, and if I look at these tree, or sorry, these um, branches, or a better example is the tree at the beginning, um, what I did was with the camera itself is I played with the focus distance and the focus f-stop between between the focal length the focus distance the f-stop it's really where i get the different sort of feelings here and so for my camera depth of field i've got a focus distance of 105 and four if you're bringing it in from maya the one thing you want to do is make sure you scroll down to your raw usd properties i think this is the camera that came from maya and so if i was to go in here you want to make sure that you have depth of field turned on right here so see this checkbox? You want to make sure that you turn that on so that you can actually see in any case you can start seeing the rocks start getting fuzzy as soon as I turn that on. So again, this is something that once you start playing with the fog and set dressing, etc., um, you can see here no depth of field. And then if I turn that on, super depth of field, right? And so obviously my focus distance is, I think it was 100 in the other one. And if I get that within the right area, you can start seeing how the horse is in focus, but everything else is super fuzzy. Now, obviously, this is a bit uh, a bit extreme, so you can start playing with dropping this down. It gets even more extreme, or bringing this up, and it gives you more range to sort of dial in that effect. And so that really helps you sort of blur out on either end of things, the forest as well, and really start focusing on him. And yeah, that's basically a great little introduction for dragging stuff in, dropping it, moving them around. It's really straightforward. So have a lot of fun, enjoy it. And in the last video, what we will do is we'll talk about how to get the lighting to look really nice. How we've got some blues and, and pinks happening and all the different render settings that you can play with in order to really take advantage of and push uh, your look. Great, thanks a lot.